supply chains, the digital, the physical, AI, all topics I want to attack today with my guest, Guy Courtin. He is Vice President of Industry and Global Alliances with Texas. Hello, Guy. Bob, how are you? Good, welcome. Let's start with this idea of the uh, all the hoopla now <laughs> over AI, artificial intelligence over this side, and over here, ESG, environmental, social, and governance, mm -hmm. and yet there's some kind of friction between the two of them. Tell me about what's going on there. You know, AI, is, it's, it's interesting. So we're here at an event, and uh, I had a topic on AI, and, and shameless plug, I had, a, I had a full room. Why? Because I had AI in the topic. Mm -hmm. And you're absolutely right. AI is, is top of fold. We're all talking about it. We're, we're talking about generative AI. We're talking about machine learning. And, and it holds this great promise to solve a lot of our issues. And there's some reality to that. Mm -hmm. But one aspect, sort of the dirty side of it, is the ESG side. And what do I mean by that? If you look at AI today, the computation power you need to run some of these queries is taking up a tremendous amount of what? Energy. Energy, water to cool off you know, the systems, et cetera. Uh, so all of a sudden, from an ESG perspective, is, that, is, is there enough lemon you know, juice to squeeze that lemon if I'm going to run or use AI for certain things? Because the impact it might have on my ESG initiatives might be con you know, negatively impacted. So is it really worth doing that? And I think there's not enough conversation about that today because it, it truly is something, as we all know, as we're moving, you know, moving towards uh, more global warming, unfortunately, we have to take this into consideration and we, we just don't talk about it. I wonder what that talk would consist of though. I mean, I can't imagine AI proponents saying, oh, well, okay, I'll just pull back on AI. That's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. And the ESG people are gonna, aren't going to say, let's pull back on ESG. So some kind of settlement has to come here and I wonder what form that would take. I think, I, I, I hate to say this because I think people sometimes draw back from this. I think it's going to take governments to, to step in and to say, all right, we're going to have mm -hmm. to at least be more conscious of this. So what I look back to is, is, is look, let's look back to travel, right? Five, 10, 15 years ago. Yeah. But back then we would take a plane, ride the train. We wouldn't think about our CO2 consumption. Today, you know, I go on Delta or I'm in Paris and I look at the Metro app and I say, I'm going from point A to point B. Mm -hmm. It's going to give me all of a sudden a CO2 metrics. Now, I will freely admit, it doesn't mean much to me. I know maybe I'm using a lot. I don't know if that's relatively way too much or mm -hmm. it's okay, but at least it's a start to give me an understanding, kind of like when I go to McDonald's and it tells me, hey, that Big Mac's got this many calories, I'm still going to eat it, but at least I know, all right, if I'm trying to lose weight, I shouldn't be eating this. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to start seeing more potentially governments, the European Union, United States, or even some larger NGOs who come out and say, you know what, we need to put at least to start put some kind of measures around this. So yeah, if you're going to run a chat GPT query mm -hmm. for X, Y, and Z, it's going to take you this much time, it's going to burn this much CO2 or some kind of measurement that mm -hmm. we as, as individuals can now make a better decision as to, do we want to really use AI for this or can we do something else? Mm -hmm. Or do we just not care? We're going to use it anyways. And the ESG folks can at least say, all right, we're going to at least put a measurement on this so that we can measure or look at what this is really doing to impact our environment. Okay, so to deal with the possible negative impact of AI on ESG, you need to measure, and one thing that helps you to measure is AI. <laughs> is that what we're saying? It's just back? a big loop. We're just looping yeah. around. Yeah, so that's mm -hmm. the challenge. And I, I've read some pieces which are interesting about how can I use AI to do better ESG? To your point, right? To do things such as better usage of water, electricity, et cetera. Mm -hmm. uh, so yes, it is kind of a big circular conversation we're having. But I think at some point, like everything, right? Yeah. I can't, I can't, I can't manage what I can't measure. Mm -hmm. I need to be able to start measuring this. And I think that's where we need to go to next is to have the conversation, mm -hmm. start putting in place some measurements about how AI is potentially impacting ESG. And then the hard part is the what do we do with it? to your point, like, do we need to use more AI to figure out how to do better with it? Or yeah. do we as humans step back in and say, all right, let's 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 make some decisions based on this. And then us as individuals, can we have the information to know, all right, if I want to do this, mm -hmm. what is the impact it's truly going to have on a whole host of things, the environment being one of them? Great. Okay, I'll give you another word that everyone's talking about, but maybe not talking about in the right way or not in a complete way, digitization. <laughs> of supply chains. What do we miss when we focus exclusively on the idea of digital supply chains? Well, we miss the big one, which is what? Our supply chains at the end of the day are about moving goods. Moving goods from oh, point you mean to the point goods point. aren't virtual. I know, it's They're amazing. Real. Yeah, we, we <laughs> don't just magically come out of our computer and appear from pixelation to right. actual goods. Mm -hmm. So I think from that perspective, what we miss is that we live in a physical world. And the reality of this is I can't move a product from Shenzhen to San Francisco any faster than the ocean can take me. 
I can move in the air, but I can only go as fast as that plane and the capacity of the plane can take me. All we have to look back to is, oh, uh, a ship ran aground in the Suez Canal, and all of a sudden our supply chains got turned upside down. But wait a minute, if it's a digital supply chain, I shouldn't have those problems. Mm -hmm. So I think what we miss, and, and I, I remember seeing this back, you know, when I started my career at Forrester in the 90s, which is the, the dot-com came out, and it was all of a sudden, oh, we have all these great digital tools. Mm -hmm. Fantastic, what can we do with them? We can do all kinds of things. Great, let's do them. But all of a sudden we realized, but if our digital front end is then tying into a physical back end, mm -hmm. I cannot ignore that. Right. And I think that's what we're missing is that there's this, in a way, we're pivoting too much to focus on the digital again. And, and I just wrote a piece about this calling, we're calling it the ground game, right? To, to, to borrow mm -hmm. a football term. Mm -hmm. But when you think about this, let's take Amazon, our favorite digital e-commerce pioneer. Yep. If I look at Amazon, yes, what do we see? It's their website, we see their one-click button, we see all their great products. Oh my goodness, the, the SKU count is amazing. Mm -hmm. What we sometimes forget is, oh, and they're building a DC five miles from me. That's the ground gate. They're physically building locations to store inventory, and then they have, we see the Amazon trucks everywhere. Mm -hmm. They're investing in physical trucks to move goods. They've bought planes, they have ships. They are investing in the ground game, which is that part of, I still need to get that box from wherever it's coming from, to your front door, to a store, to a hospital, to an oil refinery, whatever it may be, I need to get that physical good moved. Right. Now the digital side is very helpful in doing that, but it's only part of the equation. Dare I say this leads us back to a discussion of ESG, <laughs> the impact of infrastructure, supply chain infrastructure on the environment, certainly a big thing. I know things are being done in that area. Yes. To report on uh, emissions, to cut them down, but still it's funny that we keep coming back around and around. It's a big topics. circle, we keep, we keep looping around. Yeah. And you're absolutely right, it's the physical side of the supply chain is where ESG lives, Yeah. right? Yeah. But now the AI side on the digital side is also where ESG lives. So ESG, I think anyone in supply chain mm -hmm. who has an ESG initiative, really again, physical, digital, AI, you gotta look at all of it. Yeah. Key, it's always a pleasure to speak with you on these topics. Thanks for joining me once again, I really do appreciate it. I want to take a moment to ask you though about Texas, not the largest state in the union, <laughs> but T-E-C-S-Y-S, -S, yes. your company, who are you guys and what are you up to these Absolutely. days? Absolutely, yeah, I, I, I would make a bad joke about the name because I, I will say, I, I've called people before and say, I'm from Texas, and they say, that's great, I'm from Maine. I'm like, no, no, I'm from the right. company, Texas. Yeah. So yeah, so thanks, so Texas, we, we just celebrated our 40th uh, anniversary last year. We are a, a Montreal-based global supply chain company. We focus on three big areas, healthcare, distribution, and retail. And within that, we provide everything from WMS, TMS, OMS, point of use. Uh, so really when you think about it, we are a supply chain software company uh, focusing on those industries. So anybody wants to learn more, please go to our website, T-E-C-S-Y-S, not the state, uh, and find more information on us. Thanks again, Guy. Absolutely. Really enjoyed it. Thank you. That was Guy Cortan of Texas. Thank you very much for watching.